Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and in the last lecture of ECE 3400 Analog Electronics, we started to look at diodes, and I presented a nonlinear model for those diodes. Here, we're going to linearize that model around an operating point to create a small signal model. So, as a little bit of review from last time, we're looking at junction diodes, and we're defining a current I flowing in the direction of the arrow of the diode symbol. And along with our usual passive convention, we're assuming that we're measuring the voltage across the diode with the plus up here and the minus down here. So we're thinking about a voltage dropping across the diode. The current is defined by this exponential relationship where IS is a parameter called the saturation current that varies drastically with temperature. VT is called the thermal voltage. It's another parameter that also changes with temperature. And in here is something called an emission coefficient. For something like the diodes on an integrated circuit that are really bipolar junction transistors wired to act as diodes, this is pretty close to one. That's ideal. For the diodes like a 1N4148 or 1N914 that you would pull off the shelf, this is probably something closer to two. So a typical plot of current versus voltage might look a little something like this. Technically speaking, the current is zero for VD equals zero. And for negative VD, so if you are reverse biasing the diode, this actually does go negative. It goes below zero. But this minus IS is such an insignificant amount of current, you might as well just draw zero. There are some circuits out there that deliberately exploit this exponential nonlinearity. In my guitar amplification and effects class, I have a lecture talking about how diodes are used in distortion and overdrive pedals. But there are some circuits that might try to operate in more of a straight line region of the curve, where the circuit operates approximately linearly. And the idea there is that we would pick a particular point. Now, this isn't going to be very straight, but this will make it easier to show what I'm talking about here. And what we'll do is we'll pick a particular voltage and we'll call it capital V sub capital D. This is to distinguish it from the lowercase v subscript capital D. So this is the quiescent voltage that we're going to operate the diode at. And then we'll draw a line over here to the current and we'll write this as capital I subscript capital D. And this is going to be the quiescent current. And then our actual signal is going to be a small variation around this operating point. And essentially what we're going to do is find the slope of the curve at this point and approximate the behavior as being a line. So this particular notation involving uppercase and lowercase letters is a notation that I picked up from Marshall, although I have seen it in some other places. So the idea here is that a lowercase letter with an uppercase subscript is going to represent the total signal. Uppercase everything represents our DC bias point, our quiescent operating point, and lowercase everything represents that small signal variation. So here we have the equation describing the voltage, and we have a similar equation describing the current. Now, it's very likely that at some point over the course of the semester, I'll mess up this notation. Just figure out what I mean by context. Well, don't just do that. Go ahead and leave a comment below if I mess up somewhere, and I'll leave a correction note in the description for the video. So let's talk about computing the slope of this curve. So to compute the slope, I'll take this expression and I'll take the derivative of the current with respect to the voltage. So according to the rules of calculus, this IS times minus one is just a constant, it goes away. And then according to the rules of taking derivatives of exponentials, this one over NVT term shows up in front. Now, we're going to want to evaluate this derivative at the Q point, the quiescent point, our operating point. So we're going to plug in little v capital sub D equal big V big D and little i big sub D equals big I big sub D. Okay, that's a lot easier to look at than it is to say. 
So I'm going to write this by saying we'll evaluate it at this magical letter Q, and the Q indicates these kinds of replacements. Okay, at this point, let me take this expression here and just substitute in the capital letter versions of the formulas to write something like this. The manipulation I'm about to make is one of these things that seems obvious in retrospect, but until you've seen it, it's not obvious why you would think to do this. Anyway, this is times minus one is minus is. If I move that to the left-hand side, I can write id plus is equals is times this exponential form here. And well, I could take this whole expression here and notice that it matches this expression down here. So I can rewrite this as id plus is over nvt. Now, if enough current is flowing through the diode that we actually care about it, it's going to be a lot bigger than this saturation current. So we'll typically approximate this as saying that the saturation current is negligible. So we can write this derivative as the quiescent current over NVT. Now, if you look at Marshall Leach's course notes on his ECE 3050 website, remember ECE 3050 is just an earlier name for what's now called ECE 3400. He uses a notation for this evaluation of a derivative at a quiescent point, where he puts capital letters in here for everything. I haven't really seen that anywhere else. That seems to be a Marshall-specific notation. If you've seen another source that uses this notation, please let me know in the comments below. So our total voltage is the DC voltage, the quiescent voltage, plus our small signal voltage. People will often call this the AC voltage, although that makes you think about your AC wall current, so I prefer to use the term small signal. And you have a similar setup for your current. So here's that slope that we computed on the previous slide. And we can think about this as like a first order Taylor series expansion. So we'll say that the change in current is equal to the change in voltage times this slope. Again, this is really only going to be relatively valid within a small region around that operating point. This current equals a constant times a voltage is in the form of an expression of Ohm's law where this derivative here is a conductance. So let me define this as GD. So we'll say the small signal current is equal to the small signal voltage times the small signal conductance. Now remember, the small signal conductance is a function of the current. Now, we're not used to experiencing Ohm's law in terms of conductances, although it can often be very useful to think about circuits in terms of conductances. We are primarily used to experiencing Ohm's law in terms of resistances. So let me write down the reciprocal of the conductance and we'll define that to be our dynamic resistance of the diode. So the dynamic resistance drops as the quiescent current increases. And now we can write something more like our traditional Ohm's law, voltage equals current times a resistance, but all of the quantities here are dynamic. I wanna emphasize that this does not represent the resistance of an actual physical resistor. This is a dynamic quantity that's part of the model and it changes with this quiescent current. So with this small signal approximation, we've reconceptualized the diode as a superposition of two circuits. One is a DC bias circuit where the contribution of the diode is represented as a voltage source with capital V capital D as its voltage, and then this current is induced by the interaction of this voltage source and the rest of the DC bias circuit, along with the small signal, aka AC circuit, that involves this dynamic resistance. Now, you may have seen another approximation of diode behavior that doesn't think about two separate circuits being superimposed like this. It consists of a single circuit where you have the diode replaced with a voltage source and a resistance in series. So let's spend some time talking about that. So the VD ID point here, that's our Q point that we talked about on the previous slide. So the idea here is that we want to replace the diode 
with a model like this. So RD is going to be the reciprocal of the slope of the line here. And then to figure out what the voltage of the voltage source here is, this VDO, then we need to actually trace this line down and see where it intersects with the horizontal axis. So where we are at on the vertical axis is our quiescent current plus the small signal current. That small signal current is the small signal voltage divided by our dynamic resistance. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask how far do we need to move along the voltage axis, the horizontal axis, in order to get to the zero current point here for little i capital D. So the question aspect is why I put that question mark there. Okay, well, I can solve this equation here and say that it's minus capital I capital D times RD. So that's how far I'm going to have to move over. So I can think about VDO as being VD, my quiescent voltage, minus my dynamic resistance times the quiescent current. At this point, it's helpful to imagine flipping around the graph. So we're now thinking about VD as a function of ID, but I'm too lazy to redo the graph. So basically, turn your laptop sideways and then imagine mirror imaging it. All right, so what is little v big D? Well, it's going to start at VDO. We plug in zero here and we get VDO, so this makes sense. And as we increase ID, that's going to increase VD at a rate according to our dynamic resistance. Now, remember voltages in series add. So I see this addition here and then realize I can take the diode under this particular model and replace it with a series combination of this voltage source VDO with a resistance RD. So when people say something like a silicon diode typically has a forward voltage drop of 700 millivolts, what do they mean? Well, they don't actually really mean very much. That 700 millivolt is kind of a fiction we tell ourselves. It's sort of a meaningful average for a variety of typical operating currents and typical circuits we build with diodes. The underlying assumption is usually that this slope is so close to a vertical line that this dynamic resistance is pretty close to zero. So whether you want to think about your 700 millivolts as being VD or think about it as being your VDO, it doesn't really matter. And it's just kind of a guess anyway.